Now, one of the things that always gets messed up is, is, is uh, singing and music. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the scholars, the early scholars, they consider them to be haram. And a lot of the, the, the modern scholars allow it with certain conditions. Now, in terms of music, you're always going to hear a lot of opinions about this. And especially it's important to the young people. Because we are in living in a society where music and singing is part of the industry. It's part of the lifestyle. It's part of the culture of the society that we live in. Every young man growing up is inundated with music and, and singing. By the time they are two, two years to three years old, and they, it becomes part of their lifestyle. And so... Uh, when I was doing work with the young people, I realized that this was a question that was coming up a lot. And so I wrote a 16 page article on it, giving all the different perspectives and uh, explaining how the youth could deal with music going forward in terms of what it is exactly they should be doing in terms of moving forward with it and using it. So. Rather than spending a long time on music tonight, I'm sending that article as part of uh, tonight's. So it's like a reading homework for those who would like, who want to know a little bit more in this area, then uh, you can read that article. I lay out the different opinions and the proofs that they have and why they, they consider. Theoretically, they were, they were actually, there's no, no real hadith that, in fact, like Ibn Hazm, who was a very famous Spanish scholar, and Abu Bakr al-Arab, he said, all the hadith about music is not, there's no song hadith that forbids it. Uh, and so the Prophet Wasallam also used to encourage in festive occasions like Eid and weddings and Akika, or if somebody traveling and they return back, that he would encourage people to play music and sing and, and have merriment. Uh, and so this was a uh, very important for the, the community and the, especially the people of the Ansar, they were like uh, <clears throat> very good at it. You will see hadith that forbids certain kinds of instrument. And the, in the article, we discussed that. If it's why the instrument was forbidden, is it because of the sound it makes or is it because of the instrument itself, you know? or how it's constructed, like string instrument, for example, you see, I didn't mention about string instrument. Is it because of the string or is it because of the sound? Um, and this debate always continued. Uh, be, and today, if it was string, then we could replicate all kinds of sounds on a computer, of string instruments, of, you know, and we don't have that original sound captured. So there's a long debate about what exactly is being forbidden. Uh, so <clears throat> there are, uh, the, there are some, uh, very conservative position that has been taken by a lot of the old scholars and some of the new ones as well that indicate that music is haram. They say music is haram. They don't give any leeway, uh, to such, um, entertaining anything about it. But the reality is that uh, this area is very deep. Uh, Imam Al-Ghazali, who wrote in Ihya Ulum, in his very famous book, uh, he mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu allowed Aisha. Aisha, they, they had, his, as I mentioned, the Abyssinians, they used to come and they would, on the like Eid and festive occasion, they would come and they would beat their drums and they would play their music and they would have the spears and they would do dancing and so on. And Aisha wanted to see it. And so the Prophet وسلم, and they used, did it in the masjid. And the Prophet asked Aisha, you want to see it? She said, okay, yeah. And then he told the, the performers, he said, go ahead. They were from the uh, specific tribe. And he said, go ahead and play, carry on. And he stood with Aisha and allowed her to watch the whole performance for as long as she wished. And Abu Bakr and Umar wanted to stop stop uh, her from watching and the Prophet prevented them from doing so. 
and he remained with her and he allowed her to watch for a very long time. And so Imam Ghazali said that shows it was permissible. It was done in the masjid. He told them to carry on. He forbid Abu Bakr and Omar from interrupting. They played with their drum. He encouraged Aisha to watch as long as she wished and stayed for however um, she was had enough. And then eventually he asked me had enough. And then that was, then she, she said yes. So um, the, we're going to come back to music uh, on another later slide to talk about another dimension of this. But for now, that is what I wanted to say on the music part. Uh, I'm sending the article and you can read it. And then if you have other questions that may not be clarified in that, uh, you could, you know, shoot me an email or something. Okay. So in terms of lottery and raffle, this is considered like a form of gambling by your religion. Uh, because if everybody's putting up some money to win one prize, and gambling is basically, that's the same thing you're doing. If you're gathering money, everybody's putting into play, paying to play, and then somebody wins. Um, so they say it's a form of gambling. Now, if the raffle don't ask you to put any money, so for example, you may have like, you go to a dinner or something, a Muslim fundraising dinner, whatever it is. But all they do is they take everybody's ticket number and then they announce, okay, you know, um, we, we will be giving some prizes to some people who have this ticket number or that ticket number. So if it's a raffle where you don't have to prepay anything to, for, it to, for you to become part of the, the thing, then that is allowed, but not if you have to pay to be able to, um, whether by buying a lottery ticket or a raffle ticket, um, then it's considered a form of gambling. Movies, uh, movies are a tool, basically it's a tool for good or bad. And there's some conditions that we have to make sure we're watching movies, like with everything else. Uh, it's very hard because now the movie industry has evolved to such an extent where in the old days, if you see somebody kissing in a movie, it was like rare. You know, now almost every show you have to have at least the LGBTQ community represented in one form or the other. You have to have, and then there's a great deal of um, inappropriate behavior sometimes that goes on in in some of the movies. So you have to be able to be very. Uh, it's very difficult thing to do. So you have to be very selective. And make sure that you are um, up going towards movie with great care and caution. It's not haram or halal per se. It depends upon, you know, um, what kind of movie you choose. So you have to be able to keep away from movies that are promoting lewdness and sin and immorality, or they are um, belittling religion and or Islam. Uh, those kind of movies, then there's no real benefit in them. But generally. Uh, it is one of those things which you, you, the good of it is good and the bad of it is bad. We talked about Hummer. We do not consider Hummer as entertainment. This involves smoking. Uh, it involves alcohol, shisha, hookah. I know the, the hookah people claim that, oh, it's not haram, you know, I'm just, I'm just getting flavored drink smoked into my, whatever it is, into my lungs. You know, this, the scholars have considered this to be not acceptable. Uh, marijuana, drugs, anything that befogs the mind um, is not considered a, a source of entertainment for us because we are destroying ourselves in doing of these things. And so we do not have a sanctioned rec as, a, as a recreational, a way of uh, having recreation. And this is actually the go-to way most people get recreate, recreation. The freedom of all their worries in the world, they drink alcohol or they take drugs. But we are asked not to do this. Islam has always tried to get you to keep your mind sane and working. We're not trying to escape the world. <laughs> 